South Park has made fun of a lot of famous people over the years, and it's uh, been pretty brutal. It's been a well-known tactic for the show's creators to give social commentary, and celebrities are typically the first casualties of the show's brilliant and ruthless satire. It's high time to talk about who we consider the most good and evil among these celebrity characters. Hello, I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and this is South Park Celebrity Characters Good to Evil. Mm, your tears are so yummy and sweet. Because South Park has been on the air for so long, there are too many celebrities to include everyone on this list. So we'll be covering the characters who we think had the most lasting impression. And side note, this should go without saying, we're only ranking these celebrities based on their fictional South Park versions. As usual, we'll be starting with the most pure and noble character and working our way down. These characters are the good. We didn't feel right not mentioning Brian Poitano. While he wasn't an active player in any adventure, he was given high praise during the first South Park film, Bigger, Longer, Uncut. Boitano was even given a song, talking about how heroic and amazing he was, with the boys deciding how to deal with Mac and the impending war, with the simple question of, what would Brian Boitano do? Think about it, you guys. What would Brian Boitano do? Which solidifies that he is indeed a great hero in the universe of South Park. Next up, we have the dog whisperer, Caesar Milan. This appearance was made even better when you learned that Caesar actually gave a reaction to this episode on YouTube, which you can still watch on his channel. And just like Caesar, himself, fans everywhere were delighted with the episode. Unlike a lot of other appearances on the show, Caesar was level-headed and educated, and was the only person to successfully get Eric to change his behavior in a way that stuck, or at least it would have had Leanne not fallen back into her old habits. Next, we have Stan's dog, Sparky. He isn't a famous mutt, but he was voiced by George Clooney, so we couldn't resist adding him. He was stated as being the toughest dog on the mountain, and he cared for Stan. He's not kicking his but he's definitely doing something to it. While he isn't a core member of the Marsh family like Brian is to the Griffins or Santa's little helper is to the Simpsons, he still featured in a key episode, teaching Stan and the viewers about treatment of those different from us. Featured in one of the Halloween specials, we have the band Korn next. They were nothing short of great guys who wanted to do what they could to help out. While turning into giant ears of corn covered in butter wasn't the most impressive tactic to use on the pirate ghost, we couldn't count that against them. That didn't help at all. We know, it's just cool to do. After all, they admit that it was just a cool power, even if it was useless. Next up, we have the Jonas Brothers. Used by Mickey Mouse, they didn't have a lot of say in what they did and how they promoted themselves. We are we aren't afraid of him. We ranked them higher because, though they did have doubts on how they presented themselves to young girls, they didn't know that the Puri rings were basically brainwashing people. They finally broke free of Mickey's control, but Mickey was exposed on national TV, and they went back to doing music their way, which we give them a lot of credit for. They weren't heroic, but they did care for each other and for their fans. It's an unusual one, but we felt we had to include Cartman's hand version of Jennifer Lopez. She's sweet in the beginning, though a little pushy. My name is Jennifer Lopez. As the pressure mounted, she was easily swept up in the glory of fame and became more and more demanding. She eventually leaves, but the impact she made was a lasting one. Hola, bitchola. Next, we have Martha Stewart. She wasn't directly involved with any of the residents of South Park. Her character was more used to show how trends that originated from the town picked up in other areas. She always had a smile on her face and tried to make things happier, and always said it was a good thing as she led her audience through step-by-step -step processes of putting glitter or a whole turkey in unmentionable places. Not a villain, but just as swept up in the hype as many others. Next, we're placing Will Smith and Snoop Dogg together. They were some of the first to move to South Park after Token placed an ad about the town. They were well-mannered, and their families were as well. Persecute and harass us decent rich folk. We didn't have the heart to place them lower since they tried settling in as well as they could into the town, finally chased out by the older residents. Taking the next placement, we have Oprah. She's a strong figure, always demanding the truth from others, whether they were on her show or just someone in the public eye. She didn't cause a rampage like many others on this list, such as Mel Gibson or Al Gore. She's one of the figures people often turn to for input on recent events and trends, and she doesn't take that power lightly. Plus, we give her a lot of credit for keeping her cool when being held at gunpoint. Next, we have the ghost of Abe Lincoln. This was a weird one. 
He taught Kyle about how appearances, or the lack thereof, wasn't something to get hung up on, teaching Kyle it was worth more to not have the personality of a wet carrot. While it was an odd lesson to learn from the former president, it was a decent one. With that said, we've arrived at the neutral territory. These characters fall in the gray area. She was tough to place, but we're putting Britney Spears next. We felt we had to place her lower since she wasn't a great hero or anyone giving a word of wisdom, but she was a sweet young woman pushed too far over the edge. I can't take it anymore! Her episode is dark, with a lot of commentary on how we treat our celebrities. Too much was expected of her, and when she failed to meet those ridiculous expectations, she was criticized relentlessly and blew her head off. Britney didn't deserve that end, but it was an important message to hear. Next, we have a character that's appeared so many times, he may as well be a resident of South Park, Al Gore. He's written off as delusional during his initial appearances. I'm totally serial! He rambles about man bear pig, makes whooshing noises while pretending to fly around in a cape, and tries to do what he can to increase his notoriety. As the show continued, though, we learned that his fears about man bear pig were valid and that the creature was a representation of a much bigger threat, making Gore's pestering in early episodes more understandable. Love him or hate him, he's not malicious. He just doesn't always have the best methods for dealing with the problem at hand. We rank Al Gore lower because he uses the threat of Man Bear Pig to draw attention to himself and fuel his own inflated ego. Next up, take a seat with Chris Hansen. Shown when Eric faked having Tourette's syndrome, he was far more aggressive than he was displayed in the public eye. He even tells Eric about how a predator that wanted to avoid being on air shot himself, implying that Chris had taken the man out and asked Eric if he wanted to meet the same fate. But on the other hand, we also can't drop Chris lower on this list because once numerous predators are tricked into showing up for the airing, they all pull out guns on themselves, hinting that maybe Chris had been bluffing about the threat. It's a mixed message that leads to some questions and a lot of doubt. One of the most quoted appearances, we have Michael Jackson next. He was a fan favorite after his initial appearance, that he was brought back a few times, slowly becoming more and more well-meaning. He wasn't the best parent for his son when he first came to the town and was able to reflect on Kyle calling him out. Dad says I have to keep my face hidden. He wasn't a considerate specter, leaving countless spirits in limbo while he tried to live through Ike. But we give him credit that we don't think he was trying to be a horrible person. He struggles with his identity and lack of childhood, which we can give him some sympathy for. We can't help but feel bad for her, but we have to place Jennifer Lopez pretty low as well. We couldn't place her on our good spectrum due to how she reacted to Eric using his hand to feed off of her fame, but we couldn't place her among the most evil even after she threatened to beat Eric with a bat. After all, we can understand her struggle. She lost her status and her partner to a child using a hand puppet, and that would drive anyone over the edge. You can't drop me! I'm Jennifer Lopez! Next, we have the stealer of jokes, Carlos Mencia. He wound up being a short-lived character after stealing Jimmy's joke and claiming it for his own. He had unknowingly gained Kanye West's wrath and spent most of his time begging for mercy while trying to explain the joke to Kanye. Don't you get it? Please, just get it, man! Now, we don't condone stealing jokes, but he met a brutal end. The only reason we can't place him higher is because he didn't admit to his wrongdoing until it led to physical violence. Next is a real fish out of water, Kanye West. Arrogant and self-obsessed, he took out Carlos Mencia, thinking he was spreading rumors about him. Hey man, I'm a genius, all right? And all because Kanye couldn't understand a joke and refused to believe that there was something out there that he didn't understand. When he reappears on the show, he seems to be less violent and tries to take his time to defend his wife, which shows a step in the right direction. We'll likely be seeing more of him as the show continues. Because of a certain group's love of taking down anyone that pokes fun at them or calls them out, we're just gonna mention Tom Cruise and John Travolta when it comes to that <laughs> certain group. These two were not the brightest, as shown with their sheep mentality and how they easily believe that Stan was a reincarnation with the man who founded their religion. We rank them here because while they were quick to want to sue Stan when he tried revealing who was really manipulating them, they didn't do anything malicious to Stan or the other residents, though Tom inconvenienced the family and town a lot. South Park loves to make fun of politicians, and Hillary Clinton is a favorite of theirs to poke fun at. My opponent is a liar and he cannot be trusted. 
She's been in more than a few episodes, being saved from a bomb in her lower body and escalating to a woman who used Gerald's love of trolling against him. The darker she gets in the public eye, the worse her character on the show, so it's no shock that she's fallen so far from grace. Without a doubt, one of the scariest things about Hillary on the show was how she knows how to play the game and keep herself from getting caught. Finally, we've reached the dark side. These characters are the bad and the evil. Let's move on to Mori Povich. We felt we had to include him, as Eric being on his show led to one of the most well-known Eric Cartman moments. However, we placed Mori low for his treatment of his guest, wanting to get the most radical guest he could to boost his ratings. He exploits his talk show guest purely for entertainment purposes, which is dark and immoral. Do the other kids at school sometimes make fun of you? We can't forget about Russell Crowe, making movies, making songs, and fighting around the world. He's always picking a fight with someone, to the point he stalks his victims and then leaps out and assaults them. He needs anger management, and the only thing worse than his temper is his music. It's so bad that his tugboat sidekick, Tugger, shoots itself to stop the pain of listening. We hope you take voting seriously, because Puff Daddy is next. Performing the song, Vote or Die, he made a point of teaching Stan the importance of voting. That's a good thing to teach a kid, but his use of violence and resorting to death threats was probably not the most law-abiding way to get a child interested in the political process. Next up is Rob Reiner. Being against the tobacco industry may seem like a noble thing, but Reiner's need to impose his will on other people appeals to Cartman, which tells you all you need to know about the guy. You are so awesome. He tries to create phony propaganda and even makes Cartman suspicious because his henchmen give Cartman a presumably poisonous cake. All that mixed with this crusade against one unhealthy thing, while being gluttonous and unhealthy himself, we don't feel bad when Cartman stabs him with a fork and deflates him into a bunch of goo. Next, we have the main faces of the sexual addiction story, Bill Clinton and Bill Cosby. We give them a very low spot for the fact that they encourage the whole generation of kids to place all their problems and fixations on an addiction in order to avoid being attacked by the media or general public. They had the mentality that it can't possibly be my own fault, and so they sought out other things to blame. Next on our list is the winner of Biggest Douche in the Universe, John Edward. A fake psychic, he pandered to the lowest common denominator to trick people into thinking he was the real deal. When Stan tried making a point about John's abilities being fake, he wound up being John's competition instead, earning the man's anger. Over and over, John insisted he wasn't a douche or a fake but his tactics spoke for themselves. The only reason we aren't giving him a lower ranking is because he doubted himself in private and had some concerns now that he was being called out. Seeing as it's technically Randy, we have to give Lord a low spot. Lord is picked on by a few other celebrities when getting ready to perform for thinking she's better than everyone else. We will give some credit that Randy acts better as Lord than he does as himself or as Spider-Man, but this need to be loved and validated often leads to him making some bad choices as Lord, including being inappropriate on stage when concerned the performance was tanking. Next on our list, we're placing Phil Collins. In his appearance, he was manipulative and angry, always seen clutching his Oscar as he roamed about the town. When he saw Timmy join the Lords of the Underworld, he tried a few tactics to stop the band from performing, from telling Timmy that the audience was just going to laugh at him for being handicapped, to trying to convince Skyler that Timmy was stealing the spotlight. But eventually, the people of South Park made it clear just where Phil could shove that Oscar. A very early celebrity character, we have Kenny G next. He was one of the people to lead the children through their recorder playing, but we give him a low rank because of his interaction with the Garrison family. Kenny G had been hired by Mr. Garrison Sr. to have relations with his son, tricking the younger Garrison into believing his father had snuck into his room. We see that Kenny was initially meant to be paid for the act, but he just laughed and told the man to keep his money. Pretty shady and gross. That's okay, keep your money. Say what you want about him, but the man knows story structure. We have Mel Gibson next. A consistent character on the show, he is erratic and insane. Ah, oh, my nipples, they hurt! They hurt when I twist them! He chased Stan and Kenny for a few measly dollars and adorned war paint to face them. But we don't feel right about placing him lower because he was an asset to figuring out butters didn't belong in imagination land. 
though that doesn't excuse trying to run a bus off the road filled with innocent people. Next is Snooki. Seen during the invasion of Jersey, she was a parody of Gollum from The Hobbit, only a much more revolting creature that was aggressive with her sexuality, even pushing it off onto a child, which is the main reason we place her so low on our list. Snooki went smush smush. She was a horrible little thing that was only subdued when met by an equally aggressive force, Kyle's Jersey persona. The only reason we didn't rank her any lower is because she's more of an animal or creature in the show, and thus it's difficult to apply human morality. One of the earliest villains, we have Barbara Streisand next for her form, Mecha Streisand. Not to mention her torment of the boys in order to get the triangle of Zinthar and lashing out when her singing was insulted. When she takes the form of Mecha Streisand, she only stops her rampage to sign an autograph for Kyle's mother Sheila before being defeated by Japanese-themed monsters. We had to include both George Lucas and Steven Spielberg on this list, and longtime fans will know exactly what episode brings them such a low ranking. Their treatment of the Indiana Jones franchise and the trauma inflicted on not only our main boys, but everyone else, was a driving force to have the men finally taken down but it's hard to wipe away the memory of those unsavory scenes with poor Indiana Jones. Next is the face of stupid, spoiled whore, Paris Hilton. Who could forget this episode? This room's all middle class and small. Paris, being in South Park, started a whole chain of events, ranging from the young girls of South Park being encouraged to act slutty to get popular, and even trying to buy butters, putting the poor boy in a horrible predicament. Paris glamorized the idea of excessive partying, drinking, and doing drugs, and throwing tantrums to get what she wanted. I want it! I want it! Specifically to an audience of impressionable young girls. Luckily, she met her downfall at the hands of Mr. Slave, or at least some body part of Mr. Slave. Buckle up, buckaroo! The Bronze Medal of Evil goes to the Vice President, Caitlyn Jenner. She not only helps Mr. Garrison rise to power, encouraging the man to become a Trump parody, but she has total disregard for anyone or anything. She's selfish and likes to use people, not even batting an eye at running over pedestrians more than a couple of times through the show. Coupled with her abrasive and crude personality, she's not the best person to have hanging around. Tied for the silver medal, we have Saddam and Osama. We have to mention Saddam as he was a key role in not only a few episodes, but in the first movie. But we also couldn't exclude Osama bin Laden, as he was a very early appearance, and came back again to help with the Jersey invasion. Both men were cold and unforgiving, with Saddam even going a step further, manipulating Satan himself. The two men were also responsible for much of the world tragedy in the show's fictional world as they were in the real one. Taking our gold medal of evil, we have Christopher Reeve. While he had played a hero at one point, he was anything but for the residents of South Park. When he arrives in town to help promote stem cell research, he displays how he uses the science to heal himself in a rather grotesque way. With him seen feeding off of children, Reeve is greedy and power hungry and eats aborted fetuses, which I'm pretty sure goes against scientific ethics. All right, guys, what do you think? We're the most good and evil South Park celebrity characters. Let us know in the comment section. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlist, where we break down the morality of the characters in your favorite cartoons, shows, and movies. But most importantly, stay wicked.